Hello again, and welcome back to the Six Five Summit. I'm Shelley Kramer, one of the founding partners and a principal analyst here at Futurum Research. And on behalf of my team at Futurum and the team at War Insights and Strategy, welcome. We're glad to have you. In this keynote session, we'll kick off the metaverse track. And Patrick Moorhead of More Insights talks to Raja Kodari, the EVP and general manager of the Accelerated Computing Systems and Graphics Group at Intel. And their conversation today is centered on the future of the metaverse, the exciting potential that the metaverse presents for the industry and some challenges that we could also face. I'm really looking forward to hearing what Raja has to say, and I'll bet you are too. Let's go have a listen. Raja, it is great to see you, and thank you so much uh, for kicking off the Metaverse track of the 6.5 Summit 2022. You've been a busy guy, uh, globe-trotting uh, uh, around, launching products. I'm just tickled uh, that you had time for us. Thank you so much. Oh, you know, thank you, Pat, for this opportunity. And as you know, uh, you know, this is one topic uh, that I won't miss to have a conversation with you, <laughs> whether at a summit or, uh, you know, or or a, or a beer or <laughs> wherever, right? So uh, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it's great. I think uh, you and I have known each other around uh, 20 years. And I think we were, we have been talking about this notion. We didn't call it the metaverse then, uh, but the notion uh, of the metaverse, you and I were definitely uh, uh, talking about. And here, here we are right now. It is getting a little bit closer uh, to reality. But I, I think the first question is, you know, what's your take on this collective uh, conversation? And, you know, is there too much focus on the, um, the hype around the experiential uh, idea uh, or the front end technologies and software that's uh, being pitched a lot today? Yeah, you know, as you said, we've been talking about these sort of things for a long time, at least in, in our corner of the world, right? You know, the uh, you know this ultimate visual immersive experience uh, that uh, you know the computers can deliver, right? You know, in, in whatever form of pixels, right? Whether we are surrounded by you know big nice uh, displays uh, or you know a very display on your head. Uh, and so on and so forth. All of them are about this ultimate visual immersive experience. Um, <clears throat> what's different now is uh, people outside, uh, you know, our small, relatively small club are also talking about it, <laughs> right? That's, that's how I would kind of uh, position the current conversation. And I say, great, right? Now, everyone wants to talk about it. Everyone sees the the potential as this kind of you know the next set of experiences and all um and you know it's quite uh it's quite deep rooted on on why and i'm sure right you know we'll talk about some of those aspects as we hit on uh, uh you know <laughs> our other parts of the conversation yeah it's funny uh i've been around a long time i guess my 32nd year of being in in high tech and I've seen a lot of examples where where people said, "Oh, you know, this is just hype," and then it ends up somebody figures out the building blocks of 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 what it takes, and and it really makes it happen. It really does take a village. Um, so, your your strategy, you have a somewhat of a different uh, and I I think unique strategy, uh, given you know your place in the industry. Um, and you know you you're really building a technology stack to go out that. In fact, I've heard you use um, the term computational uh, plumbing, which, by the way, I love. Um, but but can you talk about your strategy? Yeah, I I, I will. Uh, Pat, and and like you said, the the hype, right? I mean, it's interesting, right? I mean, uh, any big massive initiatives, right? Hey, we want to go to Mars, <laughs> you know. So. There is a there is a hype that generates, you know, I call it enough momentum and funding for various programs, right? So the people who are looking to generate the funding generate the hype uh, to uh, you know get that scale of investment and all. But you know, going to Mars or you know, forget going to Mars, right? If you see a beautiful mountain in far in the distance, 
and they say, I want to go there once, right? Uh, you know, there are roads to go there, right? You can get in a car and start driving, right? You know, you have a map and all that stuff. But, you know, imagine a world before there were any roads. You have to, you know, pave the roads first, right? Uh, so the, the computational plumbing, computational infrastructure, and the rest of the infrastructure stuff that I talk about are essentially, I, that's the boring part, right? I mean, it's like, you know, once the road is there, you don't even talk about the road, right? But before the road is there, it, it is everything, right? So um, that is the, uh, the infrastructure. We got, you know, a good infrastructure, you know, Web 2.0 infrastructure, as they call it, right? You got you know, really powerful phones in your hand, right? Teraflop GPUs, PCs are amazing. The network is getting better. The data centers are there. Uh, we got a baseline web 2.0 plumbing, as, as they call it. But uh, what the dream of Metaverse requires is the next level of that plumbing. Yeah, I love that. It's kind of like how the internet was was formed. Uh, you know, what, what got... You know, back in dot com one what 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 got all the, the what got all the buzz was the the pretty stuff that, that you could look at and see. But on the back end uh, was a a DARPA based plumbing uh, project that you know uh, connecting uh, connecting deck alphas and none of the uh, none of the pretty stuff uh, would have happened uh, uh, without that. And by the way, I, I love the I love the road analogy too. Or, or, you know, back in the Roman times, roads used to be uh, the thing, right? Uh, and then, you know, we don't talk about roads much. We talk about the cars that, uh, that, that that go on them. So you're looking at a lot of these building blocks in your system, and uh, it's more than the GPU. I mean, the GPU is a huge part of it, but there's a larger strategy and business opportunity uh, at Intel. And I, I thought, it would be good maybe if you could provide some e examples of those building blocks. Yeah, yeah, I know. <clears throat> so the, yeah, the GPU as a, you know, visual uh, synthesis element, right, is, is an important, uh, you know, piece of the puzzle, right? And then the other computational elements and particularly AI computation, uh, which, you know, could be done on the GPU or uh, other uh, engines as well, uh, will play an important role. And, you know, I'll, I'll touch on that uh, in a second. But most importantly, this computation, whether it's GPU computation, CPU computation, AI computation, whatever form of computation, how is it uh, available and accessible to anyone and everyone, right? Is that, like, you know, again, using the road analogy, right? It's just, hey, I, you know, get in my car and I get on a road, right? from in front of my home, right? And 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 get going to wherever I need to get, uh, you know, get there. So the the kind of the moral equivalent of that for from a uh, availability standpoint, no matter where I need to enter this metaverse, right? This experience, when I want to get into the metaverse, how do I get in? Uh, you know, is all the compute necessary with me in my home or in my device? or is available throughout and is just, you know, the software and, uh, you know, the, the applications are just figuring out how to harness that. Uh, these are all like kind of next level. I mean, they're a little boring for, uh, you know, the, the, the big, uh, the hype folks, but for uh, engineers that have to make it all work, very exciting and interesting conversation, right? How do we make these things? available. So at Intel, uh, along with variety of our communication technology, 5G investments, what uh, Nick uh, is doing on, uh, you know, on the edge, uh, we are looking at like, you know, what is the software layer that makes it all available seamlessly, right? And recently we demonstrated a piece of technology that we code named Endgame on which we are building this on where a, a computation or, a, or your GPU uh, that's available in your neighbor's home, for example, uh, that you may you don't have in your home, can help you run an Unreal Engine five quality, uh, like visuals on you know any device that you own, right, um, or from a web browser for that uh, for that matter. So these are the kind of things that we're working up and down the stack, right, beyond uh, the regular Intel Silicon roadmap, software roadmap. Yeah, what 
what's interesting to me is just how many places that Intel can play and, and, you know, your sandbox, your metaverse sandbox is, is so big. And I've talked to a lot of companies who are making pretty big investments on the data center side, uh, big investments uh, on the mech side, 5G side, to really give this pervasiveness of, of service. And what a great challenge with the latency, right, and the, the real-time uh, nature of it, kind of similar to high-performance uh, cloud gaming uh, in, uh, in a way, or, or uh, doing that uh, from the edge. So it's, it's a big issue, and I'm glad to see that you're playing in, in multiple uh, areas of this, because quite frankly, it doesn't get off the ground uh, without, uh, without Intel. So uh, from an investment standpoint, are you investing in unique ways uh, in, into uh, the metaverse? I mean, obviously, you're, you're investing in all the silicon uh, that's there and the platforms. Can, can you provide some uh, details around that? Yeah, um, you know, great question. So uh, beyond uh, the silicon roadmaps, right, you know, the... GPU roadmaps, CPU roadmaps, XPU roadmaps, uh, the connectivity roadmaps, low latency interconnect and fabric roadmaps that uh, yeah, you know other parts of Intel are working on. Uh, we are uh, increasing our investment in that software layer, right? That connects all of these uh, elements together. In a part of it we are doing uh, organically, uh, and part of it, uh, you know, we are also doing some inorganic acquisitions, right? Uh, we acquired, uh, for as example, a, uh, a an interesting uh, team in uh, that's based in Poland that was doing this uh, remoting of uh, all applications. Remote My App was their name. Uh, so that's our strategy, both organic uh, and uh, inorganic for the software. The other thing that we're doing now, um, and this may be, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I may be going a, a step or two ahead here. If I really truly see the, uh, no pun intended, end game for uh, an open metaverse, right? You know, that everybody has access to. It really got to be open uh, every layer, right? Every layer needs to be open all the way to the instruction set architecture level. Um, uh, on the hardware side. Uh, so today, that's not quite the case. I mean, very far from that. So when you hear Intel talk about even our participation on Risk V and uh, and some of the stuff that we're doing there, uh, they do actually connect back to uh, uh, this metaverse uh, topic, right? Actually, just today. Uh, you know, Pat is uh, at Deos and uh, he announced uh, our collaboration with uh, uh, Spain uh, and with the Barcelona Supercomputing Lab uh, on uh, Zeta scale, but it's surrounding Risk Five. I actually see that uh, investment that we're doing there connecting back to uh, MetaWars, right? The, the, the high performance computing and the AI computing and the GPU like things you, you do. Uh, we uh, intend to collaborate with them on a very open, large-scale architecture uh, as well. Yeah, I think uh, one thing I, I think many of us agree on is that there will be open and closed metaverse ecosystems. And, and you did talk about the openness. I'm curious, are there some foundational standards that are essential that have to remain open and unified? Can you, can you get specific on that? Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, beyond the ISAs and, uh, you know, the protocols, uh, the, the way we exchange um, uh, data, uh, right, has to be standardized. Now, in the computer graphics space, right, I mean, there's a, a, a standard uh, called uh, USD. Uh, I think Pixar actually kind of contributed to that and, you know, the spec universal scene description language. I think now, I don't know the status of its standardization and all across Kronos and all, but that seems to be, you know, gaining some traction that we can all exchange, uh, you know, models, textures, and, you know, variety of scene information uh, between entities in the standard A4. Uh, that, I think, is just essential for at least the visual immersive uh, version of the metaverse that we all, uh, uh, you know, talk about. 
uh, and then then there are these other uh, layers of uh, you know as they call web3 um, you know the monetization models uh, the role of the cryptocurrency or like you know blockchain type technologies uh, and standardization of those elements as well which uh, like i said if we if we talk about this topic this is a like hours and hours at each layer there is a standardization required maybe the simplest answer is from the hardware software contract layers on isa to the operating system layers uh, to the the middleware layers all the way to the application and the monetization layers, there are standards that would be required. It's almost like the TCP IP stack, right? That, uh, you know, each layer had, uh, had a specification and uh, you could innovate at different layers, different companies did, but you know, if you know, you conform to ethernet, it works, right? At, uh, at a certain level. So in the end, do you think the community or the industry will lead the way uh, to to this metaverse future? Um, yeah, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, looking back, right, with uh, the, the first phase of web, second phase of web, um, we, it, it's not as if, like, we all had super clarity, <laughs> right, you know, at the beginning that this is where we are going to end, right? But now, you know, looking back, we can write the history as if, it was all nicely kind of, you know, those PowerPoint things we have, you know, web 1.0, web 2.0 and all. It, it's a little messier than that, uh, right? right. Uh, but as humans, right, what's interesting about, like, you know, the exponential curves we draw and all, we are pretty damn good, you know, uh, collectively about learning from the past and kind of applying that to the next thing and the next thing to kind of accelerate, right? And... Uh, uh, and the whole world, the amazing thing right now is it's not just one like, you know, hey, U.S. driving it or China driving it or, you know, Europe. The whole world is participating in this stuff, right? Uh, and and, and I, I'm, you know, just this morning talking to a, a, a dude that contacted me. He has like a, a 300 people animation team that sits in a village and he trained them with uh, on YouTube, right? And, uh, and like, you know, he wants to get in this whole metaverse thing, <laughs> right? And uh, so uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I think it is going to happen step by step, but it, will be, it won't be like, you know, hey, well formulated, everybody agrees on everything and every layer is clean and all that stuff. But, you know, if you are having this conversation in, uh, you know, let's call it 2027, uh, Pat, which I'm sure we will, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> We look back and say, hmm, right, you know. Of course, that's how it played out, right? <laughs> yeah, it is so funny how you look historically, and I think uh, particularly younger folks who don't have the sense of history, kind of, you know, they 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 can't necessarily appreciate because they don't have those life experiences to see how accidental uh, some some things were. I mean, you know, we talked about the internet. I mean, today's internet was 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 created on the back of um a uh, a messaging system uh uh in case of nuclear war that became the internet i mean that's that's nuts right and the initial uh vision of the popularity of the smartphone today was not a a pocket computer because previous pocket computers had failed right mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people are thinking there's no way this is going to happen. That's like, wow. Yeah. A app, yeah but, apps on a smartphone. Let's, yeah. let's lean right. into that. Right. So, but if you go to the root of uh, the things back, right, like, you know, as uh, as humans, right, the the the, uh, the storytelling has been part of our, you know, culture, even if you go back thousands of years. Right. You know, that. Um, and exploration is also been part of our DNA for a long, long time. It's crazy to think that people got on, you know, boats and got into the ocean. They didn't know where they were going, right? It's just crazy. And they went to go discover stuff. So exploration is in our DNA. Storytelling is in our DNA, right? And that uh, when you just think about meta words, that what the, the promise of what it allows, right? It's got both elements, right? storytelling and exploring new worlds beyond 
uh, what we know exists physically, which we also want to go, you know, travel to Mars or whatever stuff, right? So I think whether the, we may get the timelines wrong on realizing this technology, but uh, so for, from my standpoint, um, it is just a matter of when it's going to happen uh, and not if it's going to happen. Yeah, I'm there with you. I, I, I am. And I like to look past um I like to look past the past, although history is 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 most of the time a a great way to see the future. Um, I, I don't think we should we should stare at it. Uh, we should stare at it too much, and that's actually a positive on the metaverse. In that, in fact, mathematically, and you can you can catch me on this. The the more failures you have, the higher the probability of of a success. Uh, in the future, uh, in a, in a certain area, and I think we've seen that so many times uh, out there. So, uh, I want to drill down a little bit into AI. You know, something caught my ear, and I think I'm now just processing it. This this relationship between the metaverse uh, and AI, and I'm I'm curious. First of all, what's the relationship uh, between the two? Because I don't logically put to, the two together, and um, what does that infrastructure, that acceleration infrastructure uh, look like yeah. in the metaverse? Yeah, it, you know, the, the fundamental, like you know, if you just look at uh, the fundamental problem of real-time photoreal uh, computer graphics, right, you know, that immerse you, right? You know, you look at, you know, latest games like an Elden Ring or, you know, Horizon West, amazing worlds they've created, but they they are like you know huge budgets they work four years to create a, a world right you know for you to transport even in the gaming sense right um so when i look at ai just the top level promises uh, and what you're seeing some of these patterns right is that hey, i have a vision in my head right and i can describe to you computer that i i need this world that looks like this at all and what if computer just created that for me right uh, uh, you know, and then I can, you know, bring my friends along to explore that world that, like, you know, I imagine. And that's like every storyteller's dream, right? Is that I, I, I have an imagination and then I can kind of, you know, pull uh, other folks in this and entertain them and thrill them and they can maybe explore it, all that stuff. So the topmost AI uh, exciting thing, and you're seeing that with some of the work open AI is doing and a few startups are doing, is that, hey, I describe something, I type something. And it generates an amazing vision that oh my god how did like you know concoct all this stuff right so that's like the ultimate stuff but before we get there there are so many things you know what we're doing practically right you know the xcss technology right hey can i instead i can't afford to render this photoreal quality at 4k i don't have the compute power what if i render it at much lower resolution and use a neural network up sampling technology that makes it look magically same as, as if I rendered at 4K, right? And that is working out super well, right? You know, whether it's NVIDIA, DLSS, XCSS, right? And of course, there are some screen space hacks and all that we could do, but that is like almost magical when you see the output of uh, the neural uh, based up sampling techniques. And you can start applying those techniques for variety of uh, algorithms in the whole computer graphics rendering pipeline which is what like you know a whole bunch of folks that's going so that is that is a very practical here and now today use of ai in graphics that's already uh, you see in action and tomorrow like i said it's like you know this uh, this whole uh, notion that i can describe my story to the computer and it gives me a visual back oh i'm going to list i i i like if i could had a pen in front of me i'd probably take notes Remind me in 2027 to uh, talk to you about that. But yeah, I had, I think I had thought about notions of super resolutions, super resolution with neural networks, but I hadn't quite thought about the explain a world and it just auto magically appears and you can interact. I think that's really, I think that's really uh, cool. So uh, short term, uh, which areas of the plumbing uh, the infrastructure plumbing uh, do you think will get upgraded uh first or needs to get upgraded first yeah the 
uh, in the short term, I kind of you know put it in the three-year horizon, right? That um, uh, a relatively low latency access to uh, consistent computing, like for example, right? You know what uh, you can uh, get uh, on a reasonable high-end PC, um, you know the top-end game consoles uh, being more um, available to everybody, right? Even people who don't think about PCs or consoles or anything, right? You know, in the, in, in the, that uh, that infrastructure, either through Edge or through some uh, uh, creative uh, home uh, upgrades, right? Uh, uh, I, I see that happening. Just imagine that all of us have a, a modem or a box sitting that is connected to uh, my broadband, right? You know, and uh, what if that box also has, you know, a petaflop of compute just sitting there, you know, helping me out on variety of stuff that that are going on around my house, and that's my first low latency point. And a petaflop of compute, right? You know, if I look at my Pontevecchio GPU, I can hold it in my palm, <laughs> right? It, 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 yeah. So you know, there's some more things we need to do to make it all practical and uh, and also affordable to sit in that kind of you know a home modem box, but that is a, uh, a low hanging fruit in my opinion uh, that uh, that needs to happen. Yeah, and I think it's, I think it's going to happen. I think, I think history has shown us that you put the compute where uh, the data is either generated or where you need responsiveness. And, you know, it seems like even though we increase the speed of the pipe, uh, going between the compute units and storage, we just find more content to shove in the pipe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's interesting, right? You know, the the biggest uh, constraint we all work uh, in in our industry, the silicon industry, is 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 energy, right? So, uh, and we have shown that the cost of computing something is lower than the cost of moving. The result of the computation, even whether it's on chip, off chip, and, and distances. So, you know, it, it's like uh, when I hear everybody saying that everything is going to go to cloud, I just like say, in what planet? Why do you want to move all this junk all the time to cloud? Right? It's like, <laughs> it's like you know, uh, so that, that that it just doesn't uh, you know match with the physics of the stuff that we're dealing with, right? So. I see we we are in a very you know a great world you know digitization and all that Pat talks about and semiconductors and we'll be we'll have we we'll have more semiconductors and most advanced processes coming uh, in the next five years than the last ten years. So let let's leverage it. Let's uh, put compute uh, you know closer to folks uh, and solve these problems than trying to build. Uh, uh, pipes uh, and you know it's not practical, right? You can't, yeah, I, I, I think it's naturally going to happen. I, it, it, if we keep data density increasing like it has over the last 40, uh, 40 years, I mean, we we have these. I call it the the accordion, which is we have areas of consolidation, uh, and uh, and then everything spreads out, right? Yeah, yeah. Mainframe, yeah. It's a mini computer client server, PC and networks, smartphone. So, you know, if I, I, I just, you know, once data density uh, uh, starts declining or, or UIs can be drawn magically uh, uh, in the cloud, but I, I see the momentum is definitely, the momentum is on the edge right now. Yeah, and the amazing thing about MetaWords is that, uh, or the formulation of it, is that it really uh, focuses it back back onto the problem, right? Hey, I need compute and I need that compute at low latency. There is no other poster child case that is uh, as stark as the metaverse use case to drive, it, right? Many, there are many other examples we can talk about, but you know, you can kind of, you know, squint and say, is it really necessary for this case, for that case and all that stuff, right? Can I get away with a little bit higher latency for the convenience of the cloud and other things? But for this case, Absolutely, you need, uh, you know, low latency immediately. It's been an amazing uh, uh, conversation. And 
I'm sure I hope the audience is enjoying it uh, as much as I am. But I wanted to ask you one final question. So personally, uh, Raja, what's the one thing that you're most excited about the metaverse bringing to the world, uh, to society? Uh, reduction in travel. <laughs> <laughs> I did 12 cities in uh, two weeks. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm with you. I mean, to be able to have uh, a, uh, a a conversation uh, with you, Pat, uh, and other friends and family and, and the stuff that, yeah, I, I still like the physical interactions and meeting, but, you know, being able to do that more frequently, just where I feel like, you know, we are in a three-dimensional environment and having all that, the body language cues go between us will just be, will will bring the world you know, closer, right? And uh, uh, and I, the number of times I went to a place like, you know, China just for one meeting because yeah. I need to meet that customer face to face all the way there, one one hour meeting and try, you know, fly all the way back is just crazy, right? So that's one thing that, uh, there are many things, but that's if you want me to rate and prioritize. Uh, Listen, I, I love it and what I love is your consistency because I'm pretty sure 15 years ago, uh, that is what you were excited about as well. You called it something different, uh, but it's exciting too. And I, and I think saying telepresence of something in, you know, the word, uh, right. That we used, but yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I think, um, painting the vision of what that could be is super important because we can't limit it to, to what we are doing today. Right. It's three dimensional. I'm seeing you in very high definition. I'm seeing what you're doing with your arms, with with your legs. I can see um, our our brain is can elicit things from even light bouncing off our bone structure uh, a, a, as well. So a lot of work to be done in the metaverse. I am glad you are front and center. And Arajan, not just because you're passionate about it, but you can actually do something about it uh, with uh, with Intel taking this huge role uh, in it. So I'm excited. And I just want you to I want to thank you uh, for coming and uh, kicking off the uh, metaverse uh, track. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Yeah, let's do it again and uh, keep working on that telepresence. I'm in. I'm you're going to be your first customer. <laughs> thank you.